Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. My name is Steven and we're going to be discussing today uh, the setup that I have for running uh, my Kali Linux machine in parallel with my host machine of Windows. First things first is we're going to go into the internet and download what we need. The first is going to be the VMware, so VMware Workstation Player is what I use, it's a free version. 100% free, you don't have to pay for it, but you do have the option of going to um, Pro. Um, you can run this on both Windows and Linux. Um, for me, I run it on Windows. Um, but this is what will host all of your virtual machines. So next, what we need to do is go in and get a Kali Linux virtual machine for uh, VMware Workstation. And there's a couple other places that where you can get it. Um, you can get it straight from Kali. Um, or you can get it from, I believe, Offensive Security. Um, they have a build with tools as well. But we're going to go here to Kali Linux. Uh, and you know what? we'll just do this one. So right now it's downloading the Kali Linux 2020.3 ISO file. That's the biggest thing is you want the ISO file. Then you can just reinstall multiple others but for now I'm going ahead and cancel that because I already have it downloaded and what we're going to do is open up virtual machine or VMware excuse me so from here this is VMware um, as you can see here's all of my um, virtual machines I currently have but we're going to go ahead and create a brand new virtual machine so let's go ahead and click that we're going to click installer disk image file or the ISO file. We're going to hit browse. And then we're going to go to This is going to be the file that I'm going to use is going to be the Kali Linux 2020 Point one B. So we're gonna go ahead and hit open. Uh, I'll install the uh, operating system later. Don't worry about that. Hit next. Um, this is a Linux-based. Uh, let's see if they've loaded up Kali Linux into this. They have not. Oh, oh I do not want Red Hat. So we're gonna hit next. Gonna name this. YouTube Kali. We're gonna browse. I'm just gonna put this in a different section. Just so that way I'm not gonna uh over or install over a different um it looks like there's already a virtual machine there. All right, cool. There. So, um, I would just go ahead, uh, leave the maximum disk size at 20 gigs. You sh you could probably go a little bit more, um, but for the purpose of this, we're gonna leave it at 20. Um, I'm gonna set store virtual disk as a single file. Hit next, and hit finished. And there it is, right there. So we're gonna go ahead and take a quick look at some of the uh, default settings for this. So you got your memory, which is your RAM that it goes off of. Um, you could probably leave it at two gigabytes, be perfectly fine. Same with the processors. The one thing I would do want to take uh, that I do want to point to you guys is your network adapter. I've had to go back and forth between NAT and Bridged in order to uh, get it to work on certain things or whenever I'm running multiple virtual machines like if I'm trying to go after the Keoptrix level one I was actually running uh, I believe it was rigid at the time for that one but this is going back and forth between these two it's perfectly okay just make sure you shut it down adjust your settings and then go from there so first we're gonna go here hit okay and then 
play virtual machine and at this point now it's going to start it starts install so we we did the graphical install just so you have just the normal desktop configuration that you're used to seeing having your start menu and your other tabs so we're going to go ahead and hit english united states american english And now just going through and just starting to install a bunch of stuff. When it gets to the next window, I'll go ahead um, and restart the video. Oh, never mind. As I sit there and talk. Um, so the host name, we're going to make this Cali2, just because it's my second one. We're going to continue. Domain name. Uh, nope, don't have one. Hit continue. Leave that blank. Uh, full name for Cali user. Cali2. Username for your account, Cali2. Uh, password, we'll just make it U2. Cool. Continue. Uh, looks like I can't type. There we go. Cool. Uh, we're going to set it just the default Eastern time. Use the entire disk. That's perfectly fine. Only option. Uh, just go ahead and hit all files in one partition. Makes it a little bit easier. Hit finish partition. Uh, yes, you want to write the changes to the disk. Hit continue. And now we wait. I'm going to go ahead, pause the video so you guys aren't sitting here for the next 15, 20 minutes just staring at this. Alrighty, so at this point it's now asking for an HTTP proxy. We're going to leave that one blank and hit next. Okay, so now here it is asking for a software selection. In my opinion, these are perfectly fine to leave it as the default. If you want to go ahead and download the full, all additional tools and everything, you can. In my opinion, that takes up space on tools that you may or may not use. So I'm going to leave it at um, the default recommended tools. And we're going to go ahead and hit continue. Now it's going to go ahead and start installing everything that we just told it to start installing. All right, that took forever, but we're finally at the next step, which is install the Grub bootloader, which in this case, yes, you do want to do this. And then go to the port slash dev port slash SDA and continue. All righty. It's now installed. So go ahead and hit continue and start wrapping up everything. And that's going to force a reboot. Alrighty. And now you got the login page. So to go full screen, if you see this little button right up here at the top left, you hit full screen. And it will now fill the entire page. So now we're going to go hit Cali 2. And now we are logged into our Kali Linux machine. Fresh install. Everything is good to go. And to show you um, where everything's at, if you just hit here, here's everything that you could possibly need starting out. Um, it comes with, again, this is the default installation of everything. But majority of the time, you're most likely going to be right here in terminal. So we're just going to do to swap over because right now we don't have root access. We do sudo space su. Then it's going to ask you, hey, make sure you know what you're doing. And it's going to ask you for the password again. And it may look like I wasn't typing anything, but in Linux and Kali machines, even though you're typing the password, it's not going to look like 
you type the password. So if you are not used to this, don't freak out when you start typing and see nothing happen. It is there, it is typing. And if you forget where you're at in your password, hold it down the backspace for an absurd amount of time or just hit enter and force it to restart. Um, so now we are here and that is the install for Kali Linux. All right, so I went ahead and booted up my normal Kali Linux machine um, because this is where I have everything for setting up and logging into the network for Hack the Box. The first things first is we are going to need a terminal. That is massive, so let's bring that down to size a little bit. There we go. Again, first things first. Anytime you want to run anything uh, VPN or anything that's really network uh, that's like base system, always get used to running in root, and you'll know because you'll see this root at Kali. So I'm just going to head clear the terminal there. We're going to move to the desktop, and then my hack the box folder. And it's where everything I have for Hack the Box lives. Um, those are the three machines that I've been working on. And then, as you see right here, this is my OpenVPN configuration file for connecting to Hack the Box. How I know is because whenever I download it, I just threw it in the Hack the Box folder so I know which one it is. Um, from here, we're going to go to. Actually, we're going to go ahead and load up Firefox. And now we are into hack the box. So whenever you get in, um, I cannot show you how to get into hack the box because you physically have to hack into hack the box to get in an account. Um, but if you do some recon and some enumeration through the internet, you can find a method to gain access into hack the box through recon. Um, but for now, we'll go ahead and show you where to get your VPN for, uh, configuration file for OpenVPN. So what you're going to do is go over to Access, and then you're going to want the one for the Lab Access Details, this one right here. This is where you're going to be able to do all of the um, active machines. Um, go ahead, hit Regenerate or connect uh, download your connection pack so that way you have that for you I already have mine as you saw so next all you have to do um cali machines already come uh pre-installed with open vpn so all you got to do is type in open vpn and then type in the name of the configuration file hit enter and once you see the installation sequence or initiation all right, initialization sequence complete here at the bottom you are now in now if you look down here hit refresh it shows that I'm not connected so to show you we'll go to all machines we'll go here to active and we'll load up tabby There we go. So the IP address for Tabby is 10.10.10.194. So we're going to open up a new terminal. Again, go into root. There we go. And then we're just going to do a simple ping test. And of course, it's not working. Uh. Bring it back one. I'm going to start a machine and deploy my own. I do have the VPN act or the VIP access. Um, this is one of the benefits of having it is being able to use my own machine. 
But alrighty, so now we have our machine spawned. It should allow me to ping it. So we're going to go to ping 10.129.123.164. And this right here shows me that I'm getting a response back and that it is working. And this shows that now I am tied to the Hack the Box uh, Open VPN network. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. Please if, consider leaving a like for the video if you like this video, if it helped you out in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Um, if you like the channel, please consider subscribing and leave a comment down below on either any questions that you have or uh, something that it helped you or that this video helped you with. Thank you guys.